acid base equilibrium part 7 section 2 titration of poly acids or poly bases first we want to titrate h2a put in a beaker by a strong base in the burette so when oh minus is added to h2a we have formation of HA minus and H2O. Then OH minus will react with HA minus to form A2 minus and H2O. So when we add a strong base to a weak dye acid, we have two possible reactions. H2A plus OH minus, that gives HA minus plus H2O, K of this reaction is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the reactants. So K1 equal KA1 divided by KW. The second reaction is the transformation of HA minus to A2 minus, and K2 of the reaction is, is equal KA2 divided by KW. We have to study the sequence of these two reactions. We suppose that K1 is a greater or equal 100 times K2. So we have two separate reactions. Reaction 1 starts, ends, then reaction 2 starts. The titration curve obtained is the following. We have two acidities in H2A, so by theory, we will have two jumps. The first at the volume we call VE1, and the second is at the volume VE2. Before the addition of the base, we have a weak dye acid. So the pH starts from pH acidic. By the addition of OH minus, the H2A present is transformed to HA minus. So we will have HA plus, we will have HA minus plus H2A till the equivalence point. As we add base, H2A will decrease and HA minus will increase till the equivalence point where we have H2A practically zero, that means 100% HA minus. So reaction one is at the end, all H2A has been transformed to HA minus. So by the addition of the base, HA minus will react to give A2 minus. So after VE1, we have HA minus and a to minus and as we add base h a minus decrease and a to minus increase till the second equivalence point where we have a practically zero h a minus and 100 percent a minus after ve2 we have oh minus in excess and A minus that is formed at VE2. So the curve of titration can be divided into two parts. The first is the titration of H2A to HA minus. 
according to the reaction H2A plus OH minus gives HA minus plus H2O. And the second is the titration of the HA minus acid to A2 minus according to the reaction HA minus plus OH minus gives A2 minus plus H2O. So in the titration of H2A by strong base OH minus, we have two equivalence points. The first is VE1 and the second is VE2. What is the relation between VE1 and VE2? Suppose we titrate a volume V0 of H2A of concentration C0 by strong base NaOH of concentration Cb. VE1 is the volume of the base added to transform H2A at the starting to the first equivalence point so the transformation of H2A to HA minus. VE2 is the volume of the base added from the beginning, so this is the volume needed to transform H2A to A2 minus, which is present at the second equivalence point. So VE1 is to transform H2A to HA minus, and VE2 is the volume of the base to transform H2A to A2 minus. VE2 minus VE1, so this is this part between VE1 and VE2, which is equal to VE2 minus VE1, is the volume of the base to transform HA minus present at the first equivalence point to A2 minus present at the second equivalence point. So for a volume of the base added between 0 and V equivalence 1, we have the reaction H2A plus OH minus that gives HA minus and H2O. According to the stoichiometric ratio, the number of mole of H2A reacted divided by 1 equal the number of moles of OH minus reacted divided by 1. Implies at the equivalence, all H2A has been reacted. So the number of moles of H2A reacted is equal to the number of moles of H2A initial. Therefore, number of mole of H2A initial divided by 1 equal the number of mole of OH minus added at V equival equivalence 1 divided by 1. And the concentration equal number of moles divided by volume so the number of moles is equal to the concentration times volume, therefore C0, V0 equals Cb times the volume of the base added at the first equivalence point, that is VE1. If we consider our reference is VE2, so as we add base, till VE2, we can imagine the transformation of H2A to A2 minus according to the reaction H2A plus 2OH minus gives A2 minus plus H2O. According to the stoichiometric ratio, the number of mole of H2A reacted divided by 1 equal the number of mole of OH minus reacted divided by 2. 
At the second equivalence point, all H2A has been transformed. So the number of mole of H2A reacted is equal to the number of mole of H2A initial. Therefore, NH2A initial divided by 1 equal the number of moles of base added till V equivalence 2 divided by 2. And therefore, C0 times V0 equals CB times VB VE2 divided by 2. By comparing these two relations obtained, we can deduce that VE1 equal VE2 divided by 2, and therefore VE2 is equal to 2VE1. So the second equivalence point is 2 times the first equivalence point. And as a general rule for the polyacid, VEN equal NVE1. To calculate the formula of the pH in the titration of H2A by strong base OH minus, we have to determine the species present after each addition. For a volume of base equal zero, so before the addition of the base, we have the weak diacid H2A. So the pH will be the pH of weak diacid. We compare Ka1 and Ka2 of H2A. If Ka1 is a greater or equal 100 times Ka2, so H2A can be considered as weak mono acid. Then we compare C0 to Ka1, and if C0 is a greater or equal 100 Ka1, so the pH formula is equal half pKa plus pKa1 plus pC0. When we begin to add OH minus, a part of H2A will be transformed to HA minus. So for a volume of base between 0 and VE1, the species present is the acid H2A and its conjugate base H A minus, so we apply Henderson formula, pH equal pKa of the couple H to A H A minus, so equal pKa1 plus log H A minus the base divided by H to A the acid. At VE1, all H2A has been transformed to HA minus. So the main species present at VE1 are HA minus, which is an ampholite, and ampholite is acid in a couple and base in another couple. So we can apply directly the formula pH equal half pKa where HA minus is acid plus pKa where HA minus is base. So pH equal half pKa1 plus pKa2. After VE1, HA minus, a part of HA minus is transformed to A2 minus. So for a volume between VE1 and VE2, the species present is HA minus and A2 minus. In this case, HA minus behaves as acid and A2 minus as its conjugate base. So we apply Henderson on the corresponding couple. So pH equal pKa of the couple HA minus A2 minus, so pKa2 plus log base over 
acid. At VE2, all H2A has been transformed to A2 minus, which is a dibase. So we apply the relations, we compare KB1 and KB2 of the couple A2 minus, and A2 minus behave as weak mono base. Then we compare its concentration at VE2, the concentration of A2 minus, with respect to KB1, and if the concentration C prime is a greater or equal 100 times KB1, we apply directly the relation POH equal half PKB1 plus PC prime. To note that this relation can be transformed directly to pH, pOH equal half pKb1 minus log C prime, and we know that pOH equal pKw plus pH, uh, pOH plus pH equal pKw, so pOH equal pKw minus pH equal half pKb1 minus log C prime, so pH equal pKw minus half log uh, minus half pKb1 minus log C prime, and therefore the formula of pH is transformed to pH, and pH equal half pKw plus half pKa2 minus half log C prime, because Kb1 times Ka2 equal Kw. Kb1 times Ka2 equal Kw. Kb2 times Ka1 equal Kw. So the relation can be transformed from pOH equal half pKb1 minus log C prime to pH equal half pKw, which is equal to 7, plus half pKa2 plus half log C prime. What is the concentration of A2 minus at the second equivalence point? We know that at VE2, all H2A has been transformed to A2 minus. So the number of moles of A2 minus at VE2 is equal to the initial number of moles of H2A. So C prime at VE2 equal the number of mole of A2 minus divided by V total, equal the number of mole of H2A initial divided by V total, and H2A initial equal C0, V0, and V total is equal to the initial volume taken of H2A, plus the volume of the base added till this point, which is VE2. At volume V greater than VE2, we have OH minus in excess and the dye base A2 minus, which is formed at the second equivalence point. So we will have a mixture between two bases. A2 minus is a weak base, and OH minus is a strong base. So OH minus will determine the pH or the pOH of the solution. So pOH is equal minus log concentration OH minus in excess. What is the concentration of OH minus in excess? Equal the number of mole of OH minus in excess divided by V total. V total is equal to V0 plus the volume of the base added V. The number of mole of OH minus in excess is equal to the total number of mole of OH minus added till the volume V 
minus the number of mole of OH minus that reacted at BE2. And by this way, we calculate the concentration of OH minus in excess. Then we determine the pOH and we deduce the pH. Titration of a dye base in the beaker by the strong acid in the burette. For example, the titration of dye base carbonate CO3 to minus by the strong acid HCO plus and CO3 minus uh, belong to the couples H2CO3 HCO3 minus which has pKa1 and pKb2 HCO3 minus CO3 to minus of pKa2 and corresponding pKb1. The following curve is obtained. The pH will start from pH basic till the pH acidic. And since A2 minus is a dye base, so we will have by theory two equivalence points. Before the addition of the acid, we have the base CO3 to minus. When we begin to add HCO plus, a part of CO3 to minus will be transformed to HCO3 minus, so we will have CO3 to minus and HCO3 minus mixture. So for a volume of the acid between 0 and VE1, we have a mixture of HCO3 minus and CO3 to minus which is the acid and its conjugate base. So we apply Henderson formula directly. pH equal pKa of the corresponding couple HCO3 minus CO3 to minus, so equal pKa2 plus log base CO3 to minus divided by the acid HCO3 minus. At VE1, we have only HCO3 minus, which is equal to the initial number of mole of CO3 to minus. HCO3 minus is ampholite, so pH equal half pKa1 plus pKa2. After VE1, HCO3 minus is it transformed to H2CO3. So between VE1 and VE2, we will have a mixture of H2CO3 and HCO3 minus. So we apply Henderson formula, pH equal pKa of the corresponding couple, which is pKa1 plus log the base HCO3 minus divided by the acid H2CO3. And at VE2, at VE2, we have H2CO3, which is a dye acid. So the formula is the formula of the pH of dye acid we have to calculate the concentration of H2CO3 at VE2, which is equal to the initial number of mole of CO3 to minus, divided by V total, which is V0 plus VE2. Therefore, we compare Ke1 and Ke2 of H2CO3 to see if H2CO3 can behave as weak monoacid, and if yes, we compare the concentration at VE2 with respect to Ka1, and if C0 is a greater 100 times 
KA1, we apply directly the formula pH equal half pKa1 plus pC prime. Titration of triprotic acid HCA. What would happen when OH minus is added to H3A? We will have a reaction according to gamma rule to form H2A minus. Then OH minus can react with H2A minus form to form HA2 minus and any addition of HOH minus can react with HA2 Two minus. So by theory, we will have three reactions. H3A plus OH minus gives H2A minus plus H2O. H2A minus with OH minus to HA2 minus and H2O. HA2 minus with OH minus to A3 minus and H2O. So when OH minus is added to H3A, we have by theory three reactions and we have to study the sequence of these reactions. So we calculate K of the reaction. K1 equal Ka1 divided by Kw, K2 equal Ka2 divided by Kw, and K3 equal Ka3 divided by KW. Since the three reactions have the same stoichiometry 1, 1, 1, 1, so to compare the sequence, we can compare the value of K of reactions. Suppose K1 is a greater 100 times K2 and K2 greater 100 times K3. So, the three reactions are consecutive. That means reaction one starts and then reaction two starts and then reaction three. So, by theory, we have three acidities. We will have three jumps or three equivalence points and the curve is composed of three independent parts. The first is the titration of H3A to H2A minus. And when H3A completely reacted, then we will have the second titration of H2A minus to HA2 minus. And when this titration is complete, we will have the third curve that corresponds to the titration of HA2 minus to A3, A3 minus. To note that we have three acidities, so by theory we have three jumps, but in some titration examples, we could not see, for example, the third equivalence point if this acidity is very, very weak. Titration curve and calculation of the pH of the reaction of titration of triacid HCPO4 in the beaker by the strong base OH- in the buret. HCPO4 is a triacid, so by theory, we will have three jabs, so three equivalence point. The first equivalence point at VE1, the second equivalence point at VE2, and the third is as at VE3. To note that this equivalence point is not clear due to the weak 
acidity of the third acidity of phosphoric acid that have a pKa3 around 12. So as we said in the previous slide, we have three separate reactions. The first part of the curve corresponds to the titration of H3A to H2A minus. The second part corresponds to the, the titration of H2A minus to HA2 minus, and the third to the titration of HA2 minus to A3 minus. And by the same way, we prove that VE2 equal 2VE1 and VE3 equal 3VE1. So VE1 is the volume of the base needed to titrate the first acidity. VE2 is the volume of the base needed to titrate two acidities the first and the second. VE3 is the volume of the base needed to titrate the three acidities. So VE2 minus VE1 is the volume of the base needed to titrate the second acidity. And VE3 minus VE2 is the volume of the base needed to titrate the third acidities. Now we want to calculate the pH at different points of the curve, so we have to know what are the species present. Consider this curve of titration of HCPO4 by NaOH. Before the addition of the base, we have only phosphoric acid, so the pH is the pH of HCPO4 and here we have to look if HCPO4 can behave as monoacid then to find the domain of validity and if we can use the formula pH equal half pKa1 plus pC0. When we start to add the base till V equivalence 1 HCPO4 will be transformed to H2PO4 minus till the V equivalence 1 when HCPO4 completely transformed to H2PO4 minus. After VE1, the base added will transform H2PO4 minus to HPO4 2 minus till the second equivalence point when we have completely HPO4 2 minus. And after VE2, HPO4 2 minus will react with OH minus to transform to PO4 3 minus. After this point, the OH minus added is in excess. So we have A3 minus formed at VE3 plus the OH minus in excess. So between 0 and VE1, we have the acid H3PO4 and its conjugate base H2PO4 minus. So we can apply Henderson pH equal pKa1 plus log H2PO4 minus divided by the concentration of HCPO4. At the first equivalence point, we have H2PO4 minus, which is ampholite, so pH equal half pKa of the couple when this is an acid, plus pKa of the couple when this is a base. So the pH equal half pKa1 plus pKa2. Between VE1 and VE2, we have the acid H2PO4 minus and its conjugate base HPO4 to minus, so we can apply Henderson, pH equal the pKa of the corresponding couple, so equal pKa2, 
plus log the concentration of HPO4 2 minus divided by the concentration of H2PO4 minus. At the second equivalence point, we have HPO4 2 minus, which is an ampholite. So the pH equal half pKa of the couple when where it, it's acid plus pKa of the couple where it's a base. So the pH at Ve2 is equal half pKa2 plus pKa3. Between Ve2 and Ve3, we have the couple HPO4 2 minus A3 minus. So we can apply Henderson pH equal pKa3 plus log A3 minus concentration divided by HPO4 2 minus. At the third equivalence point, we have only A3 minus, which is a base. So the pH is the pH of the weak base A3 minus, and we apply the relation after we prove the validity. The relation is pOH equal half pKb1 plus P. C prime and C prime is the concentration of A3 minus at VE3, which is equal to the initial number of mole of HCPO4 divided by V total, which is V0 of HCPO4 taken plus the V added, which is VE3. After VE3, we have two bases. A3 minus weak base and OH minus, which is a strong base, by the same method of calculation as the previous uh, H2A in the previous slide, we calculate POH equal minus log concentration of OH minus in excess in the solution, and we calculated the concentration of OH minus in excess first. Domain of predominance species of polyprotic acid. Suppose we add OH minus to HCPO4, so we will have reaction. In other words, the OH minus added will change the domain of predominance of species of HCPO4. And when we say the OH minus added will change the predominance domain, we can say that the pH of the solution after the addition of OH minus determine the predominance of uh, the predominance species of the HCPO4 acid. Before addition of the base, in the solution, we have only HCPO4 that react with water to give H2PO4 minus and HCO plus. Then HCPO4 minus will interact also with water to HCO plus and HPO4 to minus. And HPO4 to minus can interact with water to HCO plus and PO4 three minus. K of reaction 1 equal Ka1 10 minus 2.15. K of reaction 2 equal Ka2 10 minus 7.2. K of reaction 3 equal Ka3 10 minus 12.1. Since the value of K of these reactions are very low, so the three reactions are limited. The species is present when we put H3PO4 in water are HCPO4, H2PO4 minus, HPO4 2 minus, PO4 3 minus, HCO plus, and OH minus. But the predominant species are only 
HCPO4, since the dissociation of HCPO4 is very weak, and reaction one is a predominant on reaction two and reaction three. So now what would happen when we add OH minus to the solution? OH minus added in the solution will react with all acidic species present. So we will have three reactions, reaction one, reaction two, and reaction three of, and we calculate K1, K2, K3. We observe that K1, K2 are complete reaction and K3 is an advanced reaction. Since K1 is a greater 100 times at least than K2, so the dominant reaction is reaction one. So what are the species present when we, when we add OH minus to HCPO4? We will have all these species present in the previous case. We have HCPO4, H2PO4 minus, then H2PO4 minus react HPO4 to minus, HPO4 to minus to PO4 three minus. So we will study the percent of species as a function of the quantity of OH minus added. In other words, we will study the percent of the species as a function of the pH of the solution. So the percent of the species as a function of the pH, since OH minus added to HCPO4, we have three reactions, and the sequence of the reaction are consecutive. So reaction one starts and, then reaction two starts and, then reaction three. So in the first part, in zone one, we will have the variation, the reaction of HCPO4 uh, with OH minus to H2PO4 minus and H2O. So as we add OH minus, or as pH increase, HCPO4 will decrease, and H2PO4 minus will increase. At this value of the pH, H3PO4 completely reacted, so the percent of H2PO4 is zero, and H2PO4 minus is maximum, so the percent is 100%. Then, after the end of reaction one, reaction two will start and we will have zone two that corresponds to the reaction H2PO4 minus plus OH minus to H2O and HPO4 two minus. So H2PO4 minus will decrease and HPO4 two minus will increase. At this value of the pH, the H2PO4 minus percent is zero and the percent of HPO4 two minus is 100%. To note that these reactions are complete even we put double arrows. Now, reaction three will start, which is zone three, that corresponds to the reaction between HPO4 to minus and OH minus to H2O and PO4 three minus. And in this case, HPO4 2 minus will decrease and PO4 3 minus will increase. So at this value of the pH, the percent of HPO4 2 minus is practically zero. That of PO4 3 minus is practically 100%. So now if we look to the complete curves, 
the variation of HCPO4 as a function of the pH is this curve till this point. The, the variation of the percent of H2PO4 minus as a function of the pH is all this curve from these points, then to the maximum, then decrease to this point. The variation of HPO4 2 minus is this curve that starts from this point, increase, increase till a maximum 100%, then decrease to zero. And the variation of PO4 3 minus is this curve till the maximum 100%. If we represent the domain of the predominance as a function of the pH on horizontal scale of pH or on the ladder diagram, we will obtain the following. This is the horizontal variation of the pH. We have three main points, pKa1 and pKa2 and pKa3. Before pKa1, the major species are H3a. At pKa1, H3a concentration is equal H2a minus. After pKa1 till Ve2, we have H2a minus predominant on H3a. Till VE1, we have only H2A minus, where the pH is equal to the pH of ampholite. This is the major species. The minor species, before pKa1, if H3A is major, so H2A minus is minor. And after pKa1, the minor species are H3A. So now we are at VE1. From VE1, before VE1, before VE1, we have the couple H3A, H2A minus. So now after VE1 till VE2, we will have another couple, which is H2A minus and HA2 minus. So before pKa2 at, in this zone, we have H2A minus major. After pKa2 till the second equivalence point, we have HA2 minus, which, which is major. And pKa2, we have codominance of H2A minus and HA2 minus. So if H2A is major before pKa2, the minor is, is HA2 minus. And after pKa2, the minor is H2A minus. We are now at VE2. From VE2 to VE3, we have another couple. So the couple of involved in pKa2 is H2A, A minus, HA, 2 minus. Before pKa3, the major is HA, 2 minus. After pKa3, the major is A3 minus. At pH equal pKa3, the concentration of the species of the couples are equal. The minor species now, before pKa3, the minor species are A3 minus. And after pKa3, the minor is HA2 minus. So the couple involved in this part is HA2 minus 
a3 minus. The challenge in this type of uh, explanation is to calculate the concentration of all species present in the solution, the major and the minors and all other species, even uh, they are in traces at a known pH of the solution or after the addition of a certain volume of the base OH minus.